Hi, welcome to Governance Bites. I'm Mark Manicevic, and today it's my pleasure to spend more time with Tony Weidler. Thank you very much, Tony. You're welcome, Mark. Always fun. Indeed. Uh, Tony started his career in the Navy, did a lot of work uh, through the Australian Navy and got into financial advice about 30 years ago, thereabouts. Uh, financial advisor, went on to manage financial advice businesses, get into governance, uh, direct thing, uh, runs a, a handful of companies now uh, and is an advisor to the advice business, so a mentor type in, in that kind of space. Very experienced man and an absolute pleasure to spend time with, so thank you very much again for your time. You are welcome. Where are we going today, Mark? So, today's conversation is about governance in a growing business. So last time mm-hmm. we caught up, if yep. you remember, it was a while ago now, we, um, we talked about what governance is like in a small business. Mm-hmm. And we alluded to at that time, you know, businesses wanting this, this aspiration to grow. And uh, what we're going to get into today is this concept that as your business grows, your governance needs will change as well. So let's start with a foundational question. Yep. What is governance? Huh. Well. As I've said in the past and, and on your, your previous show, I often describe it to people as, you know, does the boss have a boss? Uh, is there a process of control uh, for ensuring that the business is doing what it should be doing, doing what it said it would be doing, you know, making sure that it's compliant, it's running uh, in a way that, that protects and promotes the interests of all of its stakeholders, not just its owner and, and primary shareholder? Uh, you know, that governance is about ensuring those controls are in place. Right. Yeah. Is it necessary in that vein for the owner director to hand over control or... Coach, can we have situations where they still have the final say, but they're getting some independent thought and some challenge yeah. on their thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, g- governance can be quite a formal. We have a board of directors we, you know, who have legal responsibilities and, and so on to ensure that they're doing the job to represent stick. But it can also be quite informal. Uh, we, you know, we can have an advisory board type situation where you know, I voluntarily bring you in to give me advice, Mark, but I'm not bound by it. Yes. You know, I don't have to follow it if I don't like it. Uh, arguably, that's not necessarily a great way to run your business, but um, from a structural point of view, it, it's it's a very good interim step. You know, as, um, business owners start to move from that that model and mindset of everything is my decision, everything is about me, and, and the buck stops here. To hey, I've now got a team of people that are helping me grow this thing for my benefit. Um, clearly, it would be sensible for me to listen to them. Yeah, mm. but I don't always have to be bound by their suggestions, um, as opposed to that more formal structure where we've got a board of directors and fundamentally, you know, the majority position of the the board is the position that the company will take. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And in, in that final uh, situation you described there, that what would potentially call a governance board, your directors sit on the company's register as directors of the company, they mm-hmm. have all the legal obligations of a director, and together as a board, they are responsible for decision making for the Absolutely. company. Yep. With an advisory board, the directors, the, the members of the advisory board don't sit on the company's register as directors if, of the company. If, if I can interrupt, mm. on, on an advisory board type structure, the directors still have control of the company. Yes. It's just that only the one of them is a director. Board. Right, yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not bound by what our, 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 our advisors. external advisors are telling us to do, and they're not carrying particular responsibility for that. Although, you know, I don't think we want to get into the deemed director thing, do we? No, no uh, we don't want to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is the potential for them to get caught up in it. But yes. generally speaking, if it's done properly and done well, they won't be carrying responsibility, liability for the decisions made by the directors. The directors are still in charge. It just might be that it's a board of, of one or a board of two. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I mentioned, I think, last time we were here that, and as we know, that most businesses in New Zealand are small. Uh, we have, I think, 605,000 businesses as at February 2023, according to Stats New Zealand. Uh, and if you break down the numbers, 94% of them have fewer than 10 employees. If we take out actually that 73% of them have no employees, they're kind of the, the sole person running a business or shelf companies yeah. or uh, you know, various people like yourself with it being a director. It's a lot of the tradies and things, right? Yeah. Mm, yep. Yeah, yeah. So um, as businesses grow, their, their governance needs change. How would you, now you've alluded to this a, momentarily, a moment ago, how does that progression kind of look from, uh, I've, I start this business, I'm an expert, well, I've... I've I'm an enthusiastic practitioner. In, in one area, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, whether I'm yeah. a, a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter or a financial advisor or, or an accountant or anything, I'm good in that area. Yep. And I start my company and I find out I've got all these obligations, I'm doing my annual return and I'm talking to my accountants about getting my accounts together each year. Yep. When does that progression change and how does it look in governance? 
Yeah, generally speaking, uh, and, and the scenario you described is, is very typical. Uh, you know, whether that's an IT contractor, a trader, a financial advice business. Uh, you know, we, we start off with an enthusiastic practitioner who you know wants to be able to play golf on Friday afternoons and can't work on the corporate payroll anymore. Yeah, whatever their motivation is, it's something like that. So they want to take control, um, without really realising that they're doing it. They more often than not begin with some outsourced management straight away. Yeah, you know, they they outsource a bunch of financial. Um, decision making and preparation work to their accountant and they outsource a lot of stuff to their lawyer so they start to outsource some of the management functions automatically the logical progression therefore is that they increasingly outsource management functions uh, you know you, you, you might start to bring in a, a practice manager now because we've got some staff and so on and so on so we start to outsource functions of management which is what then invariably leads to and now that we've got some structure and some scale going on around us we actually need to bring in some some additional knowledge base that we don't have to make these things work properly. Mm -hmm. So the outsource management tends to be the the, inter, the the first step towards the how do we go down a governance path. Um, now a lot of small businesses of course just stay with I outsource my, outsource my financials and, and that's that. Um, but those that are trying to grow and bring staff on and, and, you know, and, and increase business lines and market presence, they increasingly are outsourcing whether it's through outsourced administration or outsourcing to IT companies and, and so on and so on. Then you start to need different sort of knowledge bases coming in to help you manage that which is when we start to go down the uh, I'll bring in a consultant or I'll bring in that consultant on a more permanent basis and call that an advisory board member uh, in fact geez that one's so good I might actually get some ongoing mentoring from that person mm -hmm. uh, and they start to teach me how to fish <laughs> yes yeah uh, and, and then that will frequently turn into this would be a good permanent sort of role for you to have here and that's when you start to move into the advisory board thing. So the evolution tends to come from that outsource management through mm -hmm. uh, and then at some stage they get to a point, if they're, they're aspirational enough, they get to a point where they go, now we'll formalise that adv advisory board thing and I'll make those people take some responsibility too. Mm. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And then from there some of them may go onto a, a governance board yeah. uh, but they'll be in the minority of businesses that have uh, you know, larger l numbers of employees, for example. Yep. Um, I, I would also uh, wonder whether in you know, many cases, uh, most people who go into a business would be talking to friends or somebody uh, to get feedback quite often. So you, you often uh, start a business and quite early on you'll have some informal mentoring. Yep. Uh, and at, at what stage would you recommend moving from an informal mentor to a, a more formal mentoring arrangement where you find somebody you think actually sitting down having a conversation mm. with this person every couple of weeks or once a month yep. um, and then maybe structuring an agenda around that conversation is adding some real value to my business. When, when would you suggest that happens? When you've got a solid platform. That's, that's my, my short answer. When you've got a solid platform in your business, and a solid platform is, you know, we now, we're, we're now at a point where we know our business model works and, and we, we know how to get new business, new clients, whatever, through the front door, you know, with a high degree of certainty. Uh, you know, we, we've got our, our system or our process for how we ensure that turns into, you know, clients or business that sticks with us. Uh, so we've now got a solid business model that's working. Mm -hmm. that's the time when you've got to start making the decision about do I just want this to be a cash cow that just works this way forever until it doesn't and it gets superseded by technology or, or Amazon um, or do I actually want to start moving and getting ahead of the trends and the times in which case you know clearly I don't have enough knowledge to do that uh, otherwise I would have done that already yes. uh, I now need to start bringing an exit so it's that solid platform where you can have some confidence about the business's ability to carry on yeah so now this is a lot of the work that you do actually in, yep. in advising businesses. So yep. uh, working with uh, businesses, how frequently should a business meet with their mentor and for how long are those meetings? Okay, so, so meeting with a mentor would be a different answer to meeting with an advisory board. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's yep. take a single advisor first before we yeah. talk about an advisory board. Um, as often as necessary, mm. that, that's the answer. Um, you, you, when you're still in small business stage and you're, you're trying to grow that business and you've got to the point of recognizing that actually it needs more than just you know, me and my technical skills. Um, you know, frequently talking to a mentor multiple times per week um, is a useful thing. Mm. But it tends to be much shorter, sharper, more focused conversations. You know, we're dealing with a particular problem, a particular question. Help me on this one. I don't know enough about this. Mentor, if you know, it's the right mentor, or you've got a series of mentors with different skills. Um, you know, you, you pick your person, ask your question, deal with your issue, and move on. That informality and frequency of contact is is 
often then superseded as, you know, you start to acquire the knowledge and the skills for what I should do around staff management, for instance. Uh, I now don't need to sit down with these guys for, you know, more than once every four, six weeks type thing. And, and generally I'd go on a, a relatively informal structure, um, meeting in a relatively formal way mm -hmm. once every six seven weeks is about right yes. you know, it gives you sort of six to eight meetings a year pull yep. things together and yep. think more broadly about the business yep. and make sure yep. things aren't and stay messed. focused on the bigger things yes. and not getting caught down in the management stuff yes yeah and i think you've already said that once the business starts to get a solid foundation and, a, and kind of a, a repeatable uh type of flow and uh, and some systems and processes in place then it's probably around the time that you want to establish more formally an advisory board? I, I, if you want to grow, yes, mm. um, if you want to grow. Yeah, and as I say, yeah, often um, the founders will be making a lifestyle choice and, and growth is not really their ambition. Yeah, sure, they want a little bit of growth to make sure they're staying in front of inflation or whatever, but you know, growth is not really their thing. Yes. Yeah, freedom is their thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. okay. Um, but even even if freedom is your thing, I'd still go. You know, there, there's still a whole bunch of things happening in the world around you in, in compliance and law, and that you're not necessarily keeping on top of. I'd, I'd still be looking at putting a structure in place where I'm bringing in that outsourced expertise and oversight, just to keep us safe. I mean, if freedom is your thing and you want that cash flow to continue, you better make sure you're doing the right things to keep it continuing. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And and I think the other another thing I would say about this uh, whole process of working with a, a business mentor or a range of business mm. mentors is you know come to it you'll come to a point where you should realize that a particular mentor you may have outgrown them yes and it may be time to you find should. a different mentor you should so, absolutely yeah. uh, one of the things that i frequently say when i'm um, you know, talking to people about coaching it's a little bit different to mentoring but you know fundamentally the same concept um, is that you know you're engaging this person to take you from point a to point b it's not a marriage right yes. <laughs> this is not a forever <laughs> thing no it should have a logical conclusion mm. you know so where are you now? Where do you want to be? Is this the right person to help me get from here to here? Yes. Then once I'm there, cool. Who do I need for the next bit? Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's absolutely normal in business. You, you see that all the time in institutions, you know. As institutions evolve, you know, a CEO um, will be the right person for the next three years yes. to take them through this part of the journey. But then we need a different skill set to, to take it beyond that part, yeah? Um, it's exactly the same as small business. And you, you kind of hope that a, a good business mentor would be the sort of person that would say, actually, you've reached the end of my usefulness. Yep. Let me introduce you to some people that can take you on the next stage of your journey. But don't rely on that. No. I mean, as a business owner, you have to be the person that recognises that you know that person has been. I'm really grateful to what they've, they've added to my business over the last few years, and now I need a different skill set. Yeah, I agree with both your points. Um, good mentor, good coach, um, good advisory board member, good director for that matter. Uh, you know, the, some of the best directors I've seen, um, it, particularly in the independent space, independent directors. Um, yeah, they're very good at going. You should not have me here any longer. Mm. Um, you need this instead. You know, the, the, that, that integrity that, that goes with having the wherewithal and the confidence to go, your business needs this and I'm not the best at it, um, is, is something that you should ideally be looking for, but you can't count on it, as you say. Um, but equally, business owners, and, and if I was to criticise a lot of small business New Zealand, owners and this is me very much me being coming an Australian for a moment <laughs> right they're often not willing to make hard decisions mm -hmm. yeah part of the New Zealand psyche is is um, yeah this this collective inclusiveness you know um, you yeah, know the common ownership we're all in this together you know, Kiwis are really really good at that they're really good at that it's also a little bit of a problem when you're, you're running a business and they're not willing to make the hard call you know and yeah I, I remember my, my business partner from years ago in, in practice down south. Um, Kiwi, good bloke, all the rest of it. Um, yeah, we, we ran into you know, some growing pain problems and all the rest of it after about five or six years and like, and, re and suddenly realised that some of the things we're doing really stupid and we're losing money on them and you know, some of the things were smart and we're making money on them. And so I said, okay, well, why don't we just get rid of the stuff we're not making money, just stop doing that. And he was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like these, these staff, they're really nice. They're good. They are really nice. They're really good people. In fact, one of them was like one of the best staff members I've ever hired make it redundant you have to you know so yes. being willing to go down that path either having your advisory board or mentor or directors being willing to go down the path of going we've got to make the right call yes. even if it doesn't feel nice it's the right call um, is something that a lot of small businesses will benefit from because they don't tend to have that themselves 
Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, the, you're in the situation you just described, you can always be in the position where you help that person get another role. And yeah. So it, it can be a good thing for everybody. Right? You, you can make hard decisions and implement them in a nice way. Yes. All right? You, yeah. don't, have to, you don't have to be a mongrel it's a great, because it's a hard decision. Great description. Yeah. Great, great summary of that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. One, one of, you know, I won't bore you with Navy stories, but one of the, one of the things that I, I do often talk to people about is, you know, one of the things the services teach you, you know, regardless of which service you're in, and that includes, you know, fire brigade, police and so on, any of those those uniform services that are involved in emergency management, you just have to make the best call for the majority. And that often comes at a price, but you have to make the best call for the majority. It does teach you to do that. I do enjoy your Navy stories, actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> not, just not on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How then does an advisory board different, uh, differ, and I think we've alluded mm -hmm. to some of this already, but how does an advisory board differ from working with one or two business mentors? Uh, degree of formality and greater focus on vision and strategy um, rather than management. Um, mentors tend to focus more on management issues. Um, so what, what you will often have with a, a good mentor uh, business owner relationship is, is the business owner is, is constantly turning to the mentor saying, I don't know how to do this bit, can you help me with this bit, where do I go for this bit? They're getting guidance on a lot of management operational stuff. Yes. Um, once the business starts to evolve to the point where it has that solid foundation and platform and you know the, the owner starts to recognize his limitations as Dirty Harry famously said in the, the Dirty Harry movies man's got to know his limitations right so you know when you get to that point of self-awareness that like actually I'm really good at this but I don't know enough about that mm -hmm. um, that's when you start to move out of the mentoring thing and more into I need this as a permanent resource or a regular resource yeah so mentors tend to be very good at helping with management type right. uh, execution issues um, the advisory board and onto the more formal governance structures should be more focused on strategic execution of the pursuit of the vision. Right. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, that's that's awesome. Thank you very much. I've got one final question for you. What advice would you give to somebody who's embarking on a journey as director? As a director. Okay. As a director, um, I would go. First thing, be real. Um, be real. You, you, you're not God's gift to the business. You're just not. Um, yeah. You do come across these directors that think that, you know, my CV makes me absolutely fantastic. They should listen and do everything I say. Rubbish. Um, you, always bear in mind, the business owner actually knows more about how the business works than you do. Absolutely. Yeah? Uh, and they do. They know way more than you do. Um, so, so keep it real is, is probably the first point. The second thing I'd say is uh, if you want to you know, go down the path of becoming a director, particularly to direct, uh, directorships outside of your core um, industry experience, you've got to work hard at increasing your body of knowledge. You've got, you've got to broaden that. Um, it doesn't need to necessarily be deep, but it needs to be broad. You, know, you, you have to start understanding the rest of the dynamics in the business sector. You have to start understanding law, whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to read financials, even if you don't like them. You know, there's a whole bunch, you've got to broaden your skill set and you've got to work at that. Um, and, and I think the third thing that you want to do is, is you have to be prepared to, to practice your craft. And practice your craft is, you know, um, fairly easily done. There's, there's any number of community organisations that, that are desperate for anybody that's willing to give them time and expertise to help them deal with their things. You know, so start with you, your professional bodies, your community organisations, your passion projects, you know, maybe, you know, getting on the board of the Taekwondo International, uh, yes. you know, so on and so on, you know, pursue, but get involved at a governance level mm. with some of the passionate passion projects. Firstly, it's going to expose you to you know, a wonderful, wonderful network of different people. But secondly, you're getting a chance to develop your critical thinking skills and understand where your limitations are. Yes. So you want to head down that path. Um, there's no substitute for getting out there and doing it. Um, just don't you know, be honest enough to not try and charge people for it when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, like, okay, I'm willing to, to, to get involved in the, you know, the professional body or the community group or whatever. Mm. I'll do the best I can as your starting point. Um, and you, you'll probably be surprised at, at, at how quickly you evolve on that basis. But you want to go down the path of becoming a director, which is a pretty contested space. Um, you, you've, you've, you've got to keep it real. You've got to be prepared to, to throw yourself into broadening that knowledge base. And you've got to get out there and do some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's three really great points to end on. Thank yeah. you. Uh, it's been really good to catch up with you. Thank you for having me back in your head office. 
it's, it's a, a lovely view out the back of the yep. office here. Uh, yep. And I'll look forward to catching up with you again soon too. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for, for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you next episode. And you know, feel free to comment and give me some feedback on different ideas and stuff for future, future casts. Uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon.